over and over and over again, social science will prove that the experience is going to be more beneficial to your life and your happiness than buying a thing. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds. It's the Appraiser Coach Podcast, helping appraisers increase their efficiency, quality, and make more money. Here's the guy who makes it his life's mission to create value for real estate appraisers nationwide. Your host and the Appraiser Coach, Dustin Harris. One of the biggest questions I get asked is, uh, Dustin, how do you take vacations as an appraiser? It's a great question, one we're going to dive into today. I want to first pause and remind you that we are sponsored by three great companies, one of those being Working RE Magazine. Woke up this morning to an email from Working RE. Why? Well, because I subscribe to their free F-R-E-E email blast, folks. And you can do the same thing. Jump on workingre.com and sign up. Just put your email in there and you'll be informed. Workingre.com. We, of course, are sponsored by Data Master. Data Master is the, well, it's the ability to save about 45 minutes on every single report that you do. That's every appraisal you do in your office, folks. 45 minutes. I'm not kidding. No, this is not just a sales pitch. Check them out. Go to datamasterusa.com. That's D-A-T-A masterusa.com. Finally, sponsored by Alamode. Alamode, of course, is the software that I use for my form filling. It's the software I use because I'm big on technology, folks. I'm big on efficiencies. I'm big on saving time and having higher quality. Alamode will do all of that for you. Check them out by going to alamode.com or 800 one 800 folks one 800 pick up the phone dial the little numbers one 800 all mode all right folks i made a big change this year and uh, it's been awesome actually i decided i was uh, going to curtail my travel this year and specifically my business travel and so typically i find myself traveling uh, on average about twice a month and they're not long trips typically three to four days at a time but it takes a heavy toll on the wife, the kids, myself. You know, you can only do so many, as my good friend uh, the other day told me, you know, metal tubes, right? Speaking of, of airplanes, you can only do so many Ubers and you can only do so many hotels. And though I love good food and I love traveling around to enjoy it, eating at a restaurant every night gets a little bit old, yes. But I find myself not only traveling for my masterminds, which I love, by the way. I travel once a month to my masterminds. And the way that works for me is there's typically two masterminds back to back. So for example, I'll do Salt Lake and Dallas. I'll do Vegas and Los Angeles. I'll do Chicago and DC. And what that allows me to do is to leave on a Sunday and be back on a Wednesday and and have meetings on Monday, Tuesday. And they flip flop, by the way. Uh, which one's on Monday, which one's on Tuesday. I love it. I absolutely love rubbing shoulders with forward-thinking appraisers who really get it, okay, really get it when it comes to their businesses. They're not just your run-of-the-mill appraiser. These are individuals who really, truly care about their business. And it's awesome to spend time with them. Not only are we in meetings together, but we have meals together and, uh, and, and do different uh, social things together, uh, just getting to know each other, uh, helping each other out, asking questions, talking about the business, and talking about non-business related things as well. And it's a great, great thing, okay? And over the years, I have enjoyed traveling for other business reasons, uh, conferences, classes, uh, presenting here, there, and everywhere, right? I've really enjoyed that. I love teaching. And I get invited on a pretty regular basis to speak in front of groups of appraisers. I get invited on on a pretty regular basis to have a booth or simply come to uh, conferences across the nation and uh, and enjoy getting to know appraisers from sea to shining sea, as as, as they say. This year, I decided to curtail my business travel to just my masterminds. 
And I have been able to keep that promise. And it has been wonderful. Now, no offense to those of you who run conferences. I've missed you. I really have. I enjoy conferences. I enjoy going to the summit. I enjoy going to the expo. I enjoy uh, going to the AI conference. I enjoy the regional conferences that I attend, the ATA and the, and the Utah Coalition and Kansas. And I've been to a lot of them and, and love it. And I miss you guys, but I <laughs> don't miss the travel. I don't miss the travel. Now, that being said, even though I've curtailed my business travel this year, on the other hand, I have been able to do and have chosen to do more personal travel. And by personal travel, I mean travel with my wife, travel with my, with my kids. Uh, we have done some amazing trips in the last little while, trips to Europe, trips to Hawaii, trips to Australia, trips to South America. And it has been wonderful. And on average, I'm usually gone, give or take, about two weeks when I do a, um, a personal travel thing. Whether it be just my wife and I or whether we take the kids, we typically like to plan around two weeks. After about two weeks, I get a little homesick. Uh, my wife definitely is a homebody, and, and she's ready to come home after, after about 10 to 12 days. And so we've, we've learned over the years of being married for, you know, 20 plus years, what works and what doesn't for us. And long trips right now are not really in the cards. Um, we like to be at home. We like to be around our family and uh, we love where we live. But we love travel. We love learning about new places and new people and cultures and everything else. And I often uh, share experiences from my travels with my mastermind groups, with the all-star team, sometimes here on the podcast. And I because of that, I get asked pretty frequently, well, Dustin, how do you even do that? You're still an appraiser, right? And, and the answer is yes. I still do a lot of inspections every week. I still keep myself quite busy when it comes to the appraisal side of things. I'm not just an appraiser coach. I'm very much in the technician side as well. And I also run a business, right? And, and that's no small feat. That's not something you can just passively do from uh, some island in, uh, in Belize, right? So here's the thing that comes up over and over and over again from, from my coaching clients. Dustin, in fact, it happened just yesterday, and that, that's really what was the catalyst for jumping on the microphone today. Uh, I was in a coach call yesterday, and the individual I was coaching, it was his third of a six-session series, if that makes sense. So you can buy coaching in packages and save a little money by saying, hey, I don't want to just meet with you once, Dustin. I really want to transform my business. And as a consequence, I'm going to buy a package of six, you know, 45 minute sessions that we're going to spread out over the next, you know, three, four months. And so he was in number three of six. And the reason I mention this is, is we, you know, usually the first session is, is what we call the vision session. It's where we really get clear on what it is that we want. Okay. The second session is usually starting on that path, the first initial steps or homework, if you will, to start moving down that path. And by the third session, we have a pretty good idea where we're going, and it's a matter of saying, okay, how far did you come on the last time, and where do we need to go before we meet next time? So I had a, a pretty good outline of what I wanted to do, and he said, Dustin, can we go off script a little bit? And I said, uh, well, sure. I mean, you run this ship, you drive this ship. I'm, I'm, I'm along for the ride. You know, uh, I definitely have a goal in mind for you, and I, and I want to push you down that that path. But sure, if you want to do something different, he said, I want to talk about four things, and they really are kind of related. And they were, they were about time management. They were about this, that, and the other. But his big issue was, Dustin, how do you go on vacation? How do you go on vacation and not lose everything? And he told me a story. And honestly, it was a sad story. He told the story of taking his wife and maybe kids, I couldn't remember. But they went on a two-week vacation to Europe. And he says, I will never do that again. And I said, whoa, whoa wait a second. I just got back from a two-week vacation to Europe, and it was awesome. right? It was super fun. And he said, yeah, but the, the, cost, the cost to me was enormous. And it was not sustainable. And he said, my question for you today is how do you go on vacation and not incur that cost? Well, hang tight, folks, because I'm going to tell you how to do it. I want to pause here first and remind you how you save money and time through Data Master. Data Master takes the information that you're going to find anyway. Some people get confused and they think the Data Master is out there analyzing and picking their data. Not true. You are fully in the driver's seat. You choose your comps. You choose the subject, you choose all that information that's important 
to the reboard. The thing that Data Master does is save you time on what we call tier one. And we're going to talk about the tiers today, okay? But tier one is data entry. It's very basic for lack of a better term, monkey work, right? It's it's sitting in front of a computer and just mundane, taking from one screen and putting in another, okay? Data Master will do all of that for you. Now, I know some of you are saying, well, Dustin, I don't do that myself anyway. I hire that out. Well, good for you. I applaud you, okay? But you're still going to save money by not paying someone to do that when Data Master can do it for you. Folks, if you're interested, and you should be, Check them out. Go to datamasterusa.com. Again, it's datamasterusa.com. And speaking of saving time, there's a reason I stay with all the mode. I've been asked, Dustin, what, there's a lot of software out there. Why don't you go somewhere else? And I said, guess what? As soon as one of those others makes it more convenient, more efficient for me, and cost effective for my business, I'll jump in a second. Guess what? That company doesn't exist except in Alamode. Alamode has been my company for over 20 years. It should be yours as well. Check them out. Go to alamode.com for more information or pick up the phone and talk to them, folks. Ask them. If, you're, if your curiosity is piqued on what Alamode can do for you, I encourage you to pick up the phone, call them, and ask them about their product. They will be glad to tell you all about it. Alamode.com or 800 Alamode. Finally, we're sponsored by Working RE Magazine. Working RE is where I go to find out what's going on in the appraisal profession because I care about the appraisal profession. That's the profession that I have chosen to involve myself in. I love it and I want to know what's going on. Working RE works hard every day to make sure that that information gets pushed out and does so in a timely manner. Isaac, David, the rest of the crew there are very concerned that you get the most current information about your profession, the appraisal profession. It's workingre.com. Working RE is in workingrealestate.com. Welcome back to the program, everybody. We're talking today about, well, we're talking about taking a vacation. Folks, when was the last time that you hung out the work closed sign and got in your car and drove to the airport and got on a plane and flew somewhere just for fun? And how many of you really had fun when you were there? How many of you could really turn it off as far as your mental state enough to say, you know what? I'm enjoying myself and I'm not worried about what's happening back at home. My guess is that for the large majority of you, it has been a long time, if ever, if ever. It is surprising to me, probably because it's such a big deal to me. I love travel, right? I, years ago, I did a, I'm logical about everything, right? I mean, certainly I'm an emotional being as well, but, but, but my wife will tell you all day long, this guy's a logical dude, right? Uh, drives her crazy. I did a study, I'm not kidding, about fun uh, several years ago. And what I found is the research indicates that if you're going to spend money on things or experiences, okay, in other words, the choice is do I buy a new car or do I go to Hawaii, okay, over and over and over again, social science will prove that the experience is going to be more beneficial to your life and your happiness than buying a thing. Now, it sounds fun to buy a thing. sounds fun to have a new truck, right? And it is, right? There's, there's some happiness that comes when you spend money, okay, on things, okay? And, and I use the term happiness loosely, okay, some pleasure. We'll use it that way. There's some pleasure that, that happens. The, the dopamine dump happens, okay, when you get on Amazon and you buy something. That's a fact. But it fades very quickly. That new thing becomes old very quickly, that excitement of something new becomes commonplace very quickly. Now, when it comes to vacations, and and this isn't a podcast all about, you know, why you should go on vacation. It's more about how you should go on vacation. I promise we'll get to that. But social science will show that the lead up to a vacation, being on the vacation, and then the memories that you have following the vacation are far more beneficial to your overall happiness than buying things. And so with this, armed with this information that I pretty much knew already because it was my own experience, but now having science to back me up, right, it is my desire 
to go on lots of vacations with my family. And, and I strive to do that uh, several times a year. But it is amazing to me how often I meet with clients who, when I start to talk to them about, you know, why is it that you do what you do? What are you living for? What is it that you're reaching for? How many of them want to be able to go on vacations, but they don't? And how many of those for the last decade, I'm not joking, okay, 10 years have never been on a quote unquote fun vacation, even for a few days. Now, that is foreign to me, okay, because I live for this, this opportunity to create memories with my family. It is my goal by the end of my life to have visited all seven continents. I'm getting there, okay? And it's an amazing thing. In fact, right now, I'm looking at my windowsill, and on my windowsill, I have one, two, three, four, five, I guess you could call them knickknacks or souvenirs or what have you, sitting on my windowsill, and every one I've attached memories of. I'm looking at a little tapir, okay? If you don't know what a tapir is, look it up, okay? A little pig-like thing sitting on my, on my uh, windowsill that I got in Belize, a little tiki that I, that I got in Hawaii recently. I mean, I could go through all of them. You, you don't care. It, the point is, is I look at those and I go, yeah, that was fun. Man, we had a good time. Remember when so-and-so did such and such? That was awesome. Okay. Now, if I have not encouraged you enough, <laughs> I'll keep going, right? Taking vacations is an awesome, awesome thing. And I live for it. I look for opportunities on a regular basis for great airline deals. And my wife and I will go to places we've never even thought of before, okay? Australia, our trip to Australia came about because I got an email talking about the airline war to Australia. And I thought, huh, here's a normally a fifteen or $1,600 plane ticket that they're now down to five, 600 bucks, right? I can tell you Australia's never really been a bucket list other than, you know, it's one of those continents I want to, I want to, uh, uh, to be a part of, right, to, to experience. But it's more for my wife. My wife's always wanted to go to Australia. So guess what? We jumped on. We got the tickets. We started planning. And, and, and it's awesome, okay? But how do you get away from your business for two weeks at a time and not have the business fall apart? The individual that I was talking to yesterday lost a great number of, of really good clients because he took a two-week vacation. And did he have fun? Sure. Was it worth it? Well, ask him. He'll tell you no. So how is it, Dustin, that you can take a couple of weeks and go to, you know, you name it, and be away from your office? Let me share with you a couple of uh, principles that will hopefully lead to some practices that will help you to get there. If this is a desire of yours, a desire to be away from your office for more than a couple days at a time and not have everything fall apart, let me start, first of all, by reminding you about the tiers. Okay, so if you'll come to me uh, for coaching, we will start by talking about, well, not start, but part of the discussion will be about tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, and tier five, okay? And, and, And the gist of it is, tier one is basic stuff. Okay, this is basic. You can go get somebody from a uh, temp agency, put them in a seat, train them for two weeks, and they can do your tier one stuff. Okay, it's data entry, it's basic answering phones, it's basic updating AMCs, it's basic, basic, basic. Okay, tier two is a little bit more advanced, but still fairly basic stuff. This is your individual who's worked in your office for about six months, okay? And maybe they can pre-sketch for you. Maybe they, they, can, they can look at zoning and understand if the subject is actually in that zoning or if it's across the street on, on the other zoning, okay? This is a little bit more advanced. Doesn't take really analysis, but it's, it's more advanced than your typical two-week training course in appraisal, okay? And then there's tier three. Most of us spend most of our time in tier three. Tier three is the appraiser technician. And the word analyst comes to mind when we talk about tier three. In other words, this is beyond data entry. This is beyond research. This is beyond data gathering. Okay, I would even put the inspection in the tier two level. Okay, it's not analysis. It's gathering information. It's sketching. It's taking pictures. It's taking notes. Okay. Uh, That's a tier two level activity. Tier three is analyzing. So this is things like choosing comps, 
making adjustments, supporting those adjustments, developing some story that you can tell the reader what they're actually looking at. Okay, this is analysis, final reconciliation. Why do you put 30% weight on number one and only 25% weight on number two? Okay, that's tier three, that's analysis. Okay, now tier one, tier two, tier three is what it takes to develop an appraisal. This will become important in just a moment. Tier four is business management, office management. Okay, this is my Shawnee. Okay, Shawnee all day long is my air traffic control person. She keeps the office running. She needs to know a little bit about technology. She needs to know a whole lot about organization and calendaring and scheduling and what we can accept and what we can't accept. You know, she needs to know enough about the appraisal world to know that, oh, this looks like a commercial property. We probably can't accept that, but let's dig into it a little bit deeper before we make a decision. I mean, that, that's, that's my tier four, okay? And then there's tier five. Tier five is business ownership. This is the CEO. Now, this is not the COO, okay? There's a difference. This is the CEO. This is the visionary guy, okay? This is the individual that, to, and when I say guy, I mean guy or gal, okay? This is the person at the top that spends time thinking about what's working, what's not working. What's my vision? Where do I want to be in a year? Where do I want to be next month? Are we doing enough private work? What can we do to be doing more private work, okay? That's running a business, making sure the bills are paid, all that jazz, right? So there you have it, tier one, tier two, tier three, all part of the assembly line, okay, for getting the appraisal from start to finish. Tier four, by the way, you do not have, these are not incremental. You don't have to be part of one, two, and three. Shawnee has never done tier three work, never has, okay? But yet she, quote unquote, runs the appraisal office, okay? That's important to know. You don't have to, these are not stepping stones, they're not chronological. Tier one, tier two, tier three will help you develop your appraisal. Tier four will help you run the office. Tier five will be your visionary person for moving forward, okay? Now, most people that come to me for coaching have a desire, and they may not know the terms for it, which is okay, we, we get to that, but they have a desire to be tier five. That's where they wanna be. They want to run the business, yeah, maybe they want to do a little bit of tier three. They don't mind the appraisal side of things, but they're tired. They're tired of being a technician only. They want to truly run a successful business or they want to do a combination. A lot of people come to me and say, Dustin, I don't mind the appraisal side, but I would like to make a lot of money and I would like to take a vacation once in a while. So how do I do that? How do I do that? Okay. Now, the reason I spent so much time talking about the tiers is it really comes down to the answer. How do you take time away from your business? And the answer to that is there's three things that you can look at, okay? There's three things that if you will, some, some type of category of being able to take time away, okay? And, and those, three, those three categories are, we're going to call them no-go, part-go, and full-go, okay? Most of us, most appraisers across the nation, my experience has shown, is in the no-go category. And here's why. They're in the no-go category because they cannot take a vacation for more than about three or four days without things really starting to fall apart. Meaning the cost of the vacation is nothing compared to what they're going to lose in opportunity. In other words, they're going to lose lenders, they're going to lose clients, they're gonna lose AMCs, they're gonna lose enough work that it just is not worth it for them, okay? And the reason they're in the no-go category is because they are currently tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, and tier five, okay? In other words, they're running out. Some of you are saying, well, Dustin, I feel like I'm in no-go and I've got a couple people working for me. Okay, that may be true, but you're still doing tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five yourself, aren't you? You're not fully dedicated to delegating all of those to someone else. So that's the no-go. And most individuals that come to me are in the no-go category. And that's fine. I was there too, right? I mean, that's why I'm a coach. I was there and now I'm not. And I'm going to show you how to get there, okay? So no-go means there's no way I can leave, Dustin, and things not fall apart. And you know if you're in that situation. And the answer to you, folks, for those of you who come to me and say, Dustin, how do you do that? Well, in your paradigm, in your circumstance, in your practice on a day-to-day, -day, it's not really possible without a lot of cost involved. Okay, opportunity cost, financial cost, okay, business cost, no go. 
your tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five. Okay. Part go, part go is okay. I've delegated tier one. I've delegated tier two. I've delegated some of tier three. Okay. But I'm still running the show. I'm still the business owner and the operations manager. And a lot of days I'm the technician. Yeah, maybe I've got another appraiser in the office, but he can't do everything. She can't do everything. Uh, I've still got the clients that require me going out and doing the inspections and doing this and doing that. Okay, This is what I call part go. Okay, And I'm going to come back to that in just a second. I want to move on just to keep things concise. I want to move on to full go. What is full go? Folks, the only way to get to full go. And by the way, full go means I can go for three months. I can leave my place of residence. I can leave my business in trusted hands for three months. And yeah, I might check in once a week. And yeah, I might say, hey, uh, Joan, how's the office? Oh, things are going well. Had a little bit of a hiccup Thursday, but we took care of it. Okay, great. Let me know if I can help you. I'll go back to my Mai Tai on the beach here. That's full go. Okay? And a lot of us have this goal to get to full go. The only way to get to full go, folks, only way to get to full go is to get fully in tier five. Let me repeat that because it's super important. If you want to go on vacation or leave or have complete autonomy to do whatever you want to do, you've got to organize your office so that you are the majority of the time tier five. That's your role. Okay. Now, some people say, well, what's tier six? Tier six is selling your business. <laughs> okay. You're no longer involved at all. Right. But tier five is where you need to be if you want to take long vacations without any hiccups. That means you've got to have people doing tier one. You've got to have people doing tier two. You've got to have other appraisers. Here's a key. Okay. Other appraisers doing tier three. Other than yourself, you can't be a single appraiser entity and leave on vacation for a long period of time and not have some major consequences. Okay. And you also can't be tier four. Well, Dustin, I can run the office from anywhere. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Okay. But are you really on vacation if you're dealing with all the fires that have to be put out every single day? The answer is no. The only way to do that is to get fully to tier five. Okay. And by the way, I can help you to get there. I've helped several to get there. Okay. Now let's go back. I told you I would spend a little bit more time on part go. Okay. Part go, there's a lot of gray area. Okay. Part go can be a lot of part and a, and a, and a little bit of part. Okay. So you have to decide what it is that it looks like for you, but I'll tell you what it looks like for me. By the way, I'm in part go. Okay. I'm not full go yet. I'm still boots on the ground appraisers and that's a choice that I make. Okay. But when I go on vacation for two weeks, it looks like this. I do a lot of inspections before the vacation. I tell nobody I'm leaving. When I say nobody, I'm talking clients and customers. Okay? Obviously, my office knows I'm gone. But I tell nobody I'm leaving. No, I do not get on the portal and say, I'm on vacation for the next two weeks. I don't do that. Okay? I, I don't want the opportunity lost for being on vacation. So I do a lot of inspections up to the date that I leave. We typically leave for about two weeks. And when I come back, the honest truth is, other than maybe a half a day to recover, okay, a vacation from the vacation, I'm back, boots on the ground, hitting it hard the next day typically, okay, doing lots of inspections and catching up from what happened before. What this looks like is this. When a customer calls my office, and let's say it's a week into my vacation, and says, I need an appraisal done on 123 Any Street, Shawnee Instead of saying, no problem, we can have that to you in 48 hours, which she normally can, can promise, she says, you know, we're pretty booked up right now. Uh, can you wait 10 days? Okay. And if they can, which typically they can, that's very typical, by the way, for my area, my colleagues. The reason I'm able to do so much more volume than my colleagues is because I have an efficient office that allows me to keep my quality high and my speed even higher. Right. And so my claim to fame is typically very quick turn times. When I'm gone, that's going to slow down a bit. Is it possible I might lose an order here and an order there? Yeah, it's possible. It's not very probable. When I went to Hawaii, we were at the tip top of the refi boom. I mean, we were doing a lot of reports, a lot of throughput. Okay. I think I 
and and it's hard to determine because you never know if they go somewhere else, you know, for time or for fee or what have you. But I'm going to guess I lost about two or three orders. Okay. Now I did a whole lot more of that when I was gone. So here's what it looks like. I do a lot of inspections before. My team is working on write-ups, and I'm helping them, okay, maybe in the first couple days of the vacation. Then I'm able to relax and enjoy, maybe check in once a day. Hey, how's it going at the office? Any questions? What can I help you with? But for the most part, I'm spending time enjoying and not even thinking about the office. And then when I get back, it's boots on the ground, running as fast as I can, getting caught up, okay? Not ideal, not ideal, okay? Would it be nice to be at the full go? Sure, and I'm working towards that. That's part of my vision story. That's part of the things that I'm working for in the next three years, okay, that I get to the full go. Now, that doesn't mean I don't do appraisals, but I do them on my terms, not someone else's terms, okay? So in answer to the question, how do you do a vacation? You've got to ask yourself, are you currently no-go, part-go, or full-go? Now, once you've determined where you are, the next step is to determine where you want to be, where you need to be, okay? If you're at no-go, which a lot of us are, it's time to move to part go. Start delegating. If you can delegate more of what you do, it frees you up to be able to more to, to do more of what you need or want to do. Thank you for joining me today, folks. Hope this has been helpful as you plan ahead to make your life as good as it possibly can be. Ask yourself why it is that you do the things that you do, okay? And be honest with yourself. If it's simply to make a paycheck, let me just tell you something, it's not enough. Find a bigger reason to do what it is that you do. Love y'all. Thanks for joining me. And we will catch you next time. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach Podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star Team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value. Uh, sorry, editor. Uh, you have to edit this out, sorry. Um... I lost the word. <laughs> All right. Um, why? Because I, I subscribe to their free email.